Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Molweni Bantu. Basan Nelson Mandela, Metro Bay. Good to be here once again. Tabang uh, in the morning. Did an inspirational presentation with regards to business development. I want to present a different dimension to it. A different value proposition. That value proposition, ladies and gentlemen, is not an antithesis to generating profit. But it's a proposition that says, in the course of running your business, engender into it a caring element, a social element to business. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Talk about a value proposition that seeks to say in the course of doing business and in the course of building a caring society, there are those in our society most vulnerable who can't be integrated into gainful employment. And that sector of society is persons with disabilities. They can be integrated into gainful employment. And for historical reasons, society sees that sector of our society as being unable to contribute to economic growth and economic development. And I stand here to argue that that sector of society, persons with disabilities, can make a valuable contribution to economic growth and development in our society. And I represent them here today. The presentation deals with the following elements. It provides some historical facts with regards to the entity, uh, the elite, the structure of the organization, an act called the Employment Services Act, and in conclusion, business opportunities that such an entity could develop with small and medium enterprises. As a way of a background, this is quite an interesting historical fact. Towards the end of the Second World War, the then Nationalist Party regime took a conscious decision on the basis that uh, there could have been many South Africans who were part of the Second World War, and as a result of the afflictions in the war, injuries, be the limb, leg, etc., etc., who will not subsequent to the war be integrated into the formal labor market. And they took a decision at the time that they will create opportunities for them outside of the formal labor market. Interestingly, know the following. And I've always argued, uh, you could write a thesis with regards to this history. I've always argued that 
narrow as it might, might be at the time, the Nationalist Party was attempting to develop what academics would define as elements of a developmental state. A state that cares for those in society who can be able to provide for themselves in the formal labor market, and in particular, persons with disabilities. So they were very clear, very clear, and I'll come back to this point later on. Because if this is what the regime could have done at the time, it's imperative in a democratic dispensation that a democratically elected government has one of its core responsibilities to care for those who can't find employment opportunities in the formal labor market. If the Nationalist Party regime attempted to do it in the early 40s, but however for a suction of the South African population. The background interview, the background overview of the factors indicates the establishment in 1943, and that at the time when the factories were established, they had what was called preferential procurement. That is, all government departments particularly, what is now called basic education and health, procured first all of their goods, be it linen for hospitals, uh, hospitals, be it furniture for government departments, uh, be it police, uh, be it furniture for offices, the factories had preferential procurement precisely because the regime at the time wanted to ensure that it provided gainful employment to persons with disabilities. And the factories at the time employed almost about 3,000 employees and more. Post 94-99, the status of preferential procurement was withdrawn from the factories, and that meant the reduction of employment opportunities from 3,000 throughout the country to less than 1,000. So okay, you, you can imagine the consequences. Skills levels stagnated in the factories, and uh, uh, the demographics, both in race and gender, became imbalanced. Post 94, 99, because the factories were part of the Department of Labor, The department uh, instructed management to develop a strategy to effect a turnaround strategy to achieve the following stabilization through growth in sales, sales, uh, selling more furniture. Uh, to government departments, uh, ensuring that the factories are known to the general population in various government departments, the government hospitals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and increase the number of employees in the factories from 1,000 uh, to about 3,000 by 2019. And thirdly, become a repository to the public and private sector organizations that wants to meet the employment equity targets in terms of disability. So one of the functions of the factories uh, is to ensure that entities who have got employment equity targets 
for persons with disabilities could then draw a workforce from the factories. But most importantly for the purposes of this workshop, uh, partner with small and medium enterprises and government organizations to achieve an inclusive economy with no boundaries for persons with disabilities. I'll come back to the opportunities later that relates to what we could arising out of this workshop do together. The next slide, uh, and to summarize it, it talks to the number of factories that exist in the Republic. And just to summarize it, we've got 12 factories in seven of the nine provinces of the Republic, with the exception of Limpompo and Pumalanga. Just to give you a quick breakdown, there are two in the Eastern Cape, one in East London, and another one here in the Nelson Mandela Metro. There are two in the Western Cape, uh, there are two in, three in Gauteng, uh, there's one in the First Strait, there's one in the Northern Cape, there are two in KZN, and in total, we've got 12 factories uh, whose preoccupation is the following products. The manufacturing, direct manufacturing of school furniture. Secondly, manufacturing uh, office furniture. And thirdly, providing linen to all uh, government hospitals. So there's a skills level that exists in all of the factories. Part of the background and currently what we're doing, the factories had no legal status in the past or a legal persona. And with the establishment in the Department of Labor of the public employment services branch, the factories now are included in the act that establishes a branch in the Department of Labor, and what is in the presentation lists the functions of the factories as a legal persona. The implications uh, with regards to the status, once again, um, they are supposed to be established as a national government component a national government component is an entity established as part of uh, public entities and an entity that uh, the state would ensure that before it goes into the private sector uh, to source whatever goods, it starts from that entity. So consistent with a caring state that seeks to ensure that persons with disabilities are provided with employment opportunities. The value chain, with regards to what we could do together, the factors, first and foremost, as I had said, constitute a repository for special schools for persons with disabilities, and their, uh, the provision of learnerships, and as I had indicated, even though we were sheltered employment factories, we're now in a transition to becoming supported employment enterprises. The opportunities for small and medium enterprises, and perhaps more importantly, the registration into our database to provide transport logistics. Uh, secondly, to the extent that we are delivering school, furniture to schools, and that's a huge project currently in the Eastern Cape, create opportunities for the assembling of school furniture on site and the supply of raw materials, training opportunities related to skills trading service providers and learnerships, jobs, employment of persons with disabilities, and establishment would want to establish as factories collaboration and partnerships 
with cooperatives. In conclusion, we supply, you would see from the exhibition stand outside, we supply quality products to the health and education the departments ensuring value for money, saving the departments and taxpayers money in the long run, with their largest employment creator for persons with disabilities, and will remain dedicated to ensuring their participation in economic activity and economic growth. And I want to conclude the presentation by quoting a renowned academic, Martha Cabrera, who once said the following, and I quote, Reconstructing the sense of our national and personal histories is a path to understanding that there is meaning in what we are and what we lived through. Despite everything, and this is what allows us to go forward in life. Going forward in life requires new energy. I thank you.